What's going on, y'all? Today, we're going to talk about the skill of turning strangers into friends. This is going to be useful for you for a variety of reasons, not the least of which would be anywhere that you go, relocate to, what have you, you're able to start building up a social and professional circle of the type of people that you want to be around with. This is also going to be useful in professional circles, networking events, etc., and perhaps in your romantic life as well. All right. How did I learn this skill of turning strangers into friends? Well, it started with a romantic focus. Let's go all the way back to circa 2007. 2007? Might have been 2008. And I was in the basement of my mother's house. She was gone. And I was smoking a bowl with two of my friends. And we had become friends for a couple of reasons. What brought us together was freshman football. One of us was decent. The other two of us were god-awful. But then we each had skill and facility with the English language and aptitude for it. One of us later would become an award-winning journalist and graduate magna cum laude or summa cum laude from a fancy journalism school. The other is one of the most gifted writers and wits I have ever known. And then you got me, angsty, part-time, secret poet and stage actor and singer. So each of us using language in a different way, and we were all in the AP and the honors English courses, and then the history courses as well. So anyway, we become friends, and we're in the basement of my mother's house smoking this bowl, and we're talking about women, and they were like, Hewitt, you have no game. And I was like, shut up, dude. I have game. But I started to get a little bit anxious because this was a really sore spot for me because I knew. I was like, I don't think I have any game. Who really knows what game is, right? Especially at that age. But I had to pay attention to what they were saying because they were kissing more girls than I was. And they were doing so intentionally. Whereas for me, it kind of felt like, oh, I sort of stumbled into this. Let's kiss. One of them was the classic square-jawed Chad Jock. At least he seemed to be at the time. And I remember when we were freshmen watching a football game from the stands, turning around and being like, whoa, dude, he's kissing a girl. I think it might have been the first time that I'd ever seen anybody making out. And then the other friend, less studly by the high school metrics, but he was doing okay for himself using a different skill stack to make this work for him. I was like, all right, fine. I'm going to listen. So we had this little talk, smoking this bowl, Jamaican baking, the basement bathroom. And essentially what we came to was they were like, look, dude, you got a car, you got a job, you're single. Why don't you just go start taking girls out on dates? I was like, all right, that sounds like pretty good logic. So that's what I did. I went and I started talking to every single girl that I could find, chatting her up, getting her number, and then asking her out on a date, taking her out on a date. And right here is where we're going to get into a recurring theme, which is you're going to fail. You're going to fall flat on your face. This is not just showing up for me there and, oh, you're asking a girl out or you're trying to get this girl's number and you're going to fail. But it's like you actually go on the date and it's a complete disaster. So I started doing this and then... I noticed it's not unlike a used car salesman or a a really bad tacky sales conversation. When you've got this certain energy, this very transactional energy coming off of you, emanating from you, it pushes people away. They're like, ugh, they're like, I know what you're going for here, but like, don't make it so obvious, so gross, right? So I was like, okay, let me, I seem to have overcorrected here. Let me dial this back in. Well, what if I just talked to you like you were a bro, like you were just a dude? Well, 
I was soon after going to college, which was the perfect testing ground for a ton of social interactions all of the time, men and women. So I just started talking to the dudes. And then I'd start talking to the women in the same way that I was talking to the dudes or with the same overall initial energy approach. This started to work like gangbusters. I had friends everywhere. I was like, oh, hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? All around the campus. Later on, when I got into the world of opera, which is a nonprofit, schmoozing, which is where the singers go to a donor party or a donor event, and you have to talk to people, or there's an expectation that you have to talk to people. This became another testing ground for me to implement these skills. And I essentially used the same tactics, the same strategies, the same mindsets. And again, it worked like gangbusters. Whether by nature or by nurture, I'm the type of person who is having a good time wherever I am, whatever I'm doing for the most part. And so these things became fun. Maybe they were fun because I was having quote unquote success at them. Maybe it's just who I am. Eventually, this started to get me attention from the higher ups in the opera world at whatever company I was at. And so by the end of my tenure there, when it came time to have a big donor dinner, it was the artistic director, me, and then the donor sponsoring the season. Which then looks like the higher up you go, the more that donor is paying. So it's a person of prominence and power in the artistic world, a myself, and then a DECA billionaire on multiple occasions, or a head of state, or a VP of a large and important company. The art of turning strangers into friends is real, and it is a skill that can be learned because I was terrible at this. That timeline took a little over 10 years. It took about 10 years. And so, like I said, the recurring theme here is that you've got to get used to failure. And failure is okay. In fact, failure is funny. The only way to really fail is if you fail to extract a lesson from whatever is going on. So, if you make the same mistake twice, totally forgive, totally forgivable. If you make the same mistake twice for the same reason, you might want to check yourself. So the first thing that you've got to know about turning strangers into friends is that you have to be able to manage your energy and understand with self-awareness and EQ, how you're coming off and be able to read the room. See if this person is even approachable. Do they have this approachable energy? Do you have an approachable energy? If you want to be the type of person who is able to walk up and just start a conversation with anybody and not have it be weird, not have them be like, oh God, please let me get out of here. I'm trapped. But have them be like, hey, dude, you're cool. Let me get your number. Let's Let's hang out then you've got to be that person as well. And you also need to make sure that your energy that you're going in there with, your expectations, your everything is not transactional. It's genuine. This blends the line between the tactical, compliment their shoes, and the metaphysical or strategic. Just don't want anything from them and say what you're feeling. But that's actually a good way to look at it. Like what about this person seems approachable? What do I what am I genuinely interested in or what do I like or what speaks to me about whatever they have going on? And then let me comment on it. Say what I'm feeling. Say what is attractive to me or is has interested me. And then leave it at that. And then if you want to give that comment a little bit more relevance, then you would say something that's relevant 
to yourself. Let's go with the shoes one. Dude, I love those Jordans. Those are sick. Are those the, you know, whatever? Insert Jordan crossover what, collaboration, whatever. I have a pair of the this, this, and this. Because then what that's telling this person is, oh, you are into the same things that they are and you have skin in the game. So you're actually seeming like more of a of a peer to them, at least in this realm. I wear this cowboy hat everywhere. It's a nice cowboy hat. It's custom made by O'Farrell's in Santa Fe. It's a beaver blend, and I have a full beaver one on the way. So it looks nice. It's functional. Like you can just tell. It's not a Stetson. And then it's such a loud, eccentric thing to wear that it's very deliberate. It's definitely an expression of me or who I am wanting to be or come off as or how I'm vibing on a given day. So if I see somebody else who has some similarly similarly eccentric expression and I've got the hat, the rest of my wardrobe tends to be congruent with this. So the hat is really just the cherry on top, the final piece. And I've got the hat on, then I can be like, bro, I love your style. This is sick. I love what you got going on, even if it's totally different than me. But because I have my own thing going on, there's congruence there. And again, we're at that that peer level. Now, if you want to not come off as a peer, because genuinely you are not, let's go with the style one. You're dressed like plain Jane and you see somebody with loud, awesome style. Just be like, and you want to have more loud, awesome style. Like, Hey, I love what you got going on here. How do you, how do you think about that? How do you think about putting this together? Or did you ever dress like plain Jane? Like me, what changed? The things that are common here is that you are genuine and you're not overthinking what to say so that you can still be present. You're just asking what's obvious. And again, the obvious thing that you're wondering about, what might for you be the piece of knowledge that you need to get started on your journey that this person, their perspective you want, that's probably going to have the effect that you're looking for if you were to be sitting there thinking, what is the best possible question that I could ask this person? And then you never know what might happen. If the vibe is right and you have assessed the situation correctly, this person's going to give you an answer and maybe they'll say, dude, I love that you asked me this. Let's talk about it. I would love to help you out. Or I've always wanted to help somebody figure out their style. Let me help you. Let's go, I don't know, shopping or something. Who knows? You just don't know what could happen. And then that's where a stranger has now started to turn into a friend. The door has opened for you to turn into a friend. Another important thing to understand going into the situation for both the more zoomed out strategic aspect of it and then the tactical. Have somewhere to be. This is going to be helpful to end the conversation at an appropriate time or before you hit that awkward, hmm, Oh my, look at the time. I must be going. Juncture. But then it also allows you to go in there, be direct, and then move on. And if you are that kind of person, bonus points, if you've got something cool going on that you can invite them to. Because remember, creation is an invitation to connect. And if you've got something going on, now you can invite them to come check it out. This could be a party. Dude, I love your vibe. You seem really cool. What's up? Do you want to come to this party that I'm having later? Or I'm going to a party at so-and-so's. You want to come? Or, hey, I've got this thing going on. Love to see you there. I think you might like it. There's going to be a, other, a bunch of other people who have this similar vibe, etc. and so forth. This is also going to give you confidence to approach somebody. You've got something that you're going to offer, something that you're excited about. And you're going to bring them into your world. Perhaps they will do the same. Don't expect them to do the same. And if you get rejected, again, back to failure, it's okay. That happens. No matter how good you get at something, you're still going to mess up. Let me give you a couple examples. 
There's a few domains that I have achieved what I would say is a relative level of mastery in stage performance and singing, fitness, and turning strangers into friends, aka walking up to anybody, anywhere, and starting a conversation with them. This could be the hottest woman you've ever seen. This could be a big celebrity, whatever. Part of that is you simply just look at people as people and you become unimpressed by these other things that people tend to deify them for and treat them as not human for. That's a topic for another conversation. All right, so a few examples of where failure is normal, no matter how high of a level of mastery you have attained in some area. Let's look first at voice and performance. I was aware and considered myself really fortunate and blessed that the one thing that I could always count on was my voice. Even if my technique wasn't perfect, even if circumstances were far from ideal, I was always going to be able to make it through a song, hit whatever the risky note was in at least some passable way. Might not have always been pretty, but I would always make it through and sell it, give the performance. Well, one of the last things that I did, actually, this might have been the last thing that I did before the old Rona shut everything down, was the Latte Lenya competition semifinals. And this is a competition that is so completely within my wheelhouse. I had done well the previous times that I had entered. The first time I was a finalist. Second time I made it to, I think, the semifinals. Actually, this might have been the second time or the third time. But everything about it is within my wheelhouse. And then inside of that meant that all of the rep that was available to me, like I was picking the rep based on my strong suits, vocally and presentation-wise. And I was singing rep that I had sung lots of times before in high pressure situations. My voice completely imploded. And this is not like, oh, you typical singer, <clears throat> such ridiculous high standards. Nobody else would have even noticed that, you know, something was off. It was like, no, no, no. My larynx had a complete 12 car pileup in two different pieces, Swazimobile and her face, her face not even, not even high, not even technically challenging. Swazimobile, much the same. I like completely biffed the note. It didn't even go. It just sounded like I was getting strangled and I felt like I was in good voice that day. Completely embarrassing. So embarrassing that it was like, <laughs> and so anomalous. It is like, what do I even do about that? Oh my God. Okay. It happens. Another example of just failure would be training the deadlift form. I have perfect deadlift form. I've gotten, I've been deadlifting for years. I've gotten this checked out by people who teach deadlift form and who are incredibly strict with their standards, the strong first barbell certification. I've gotten injured doing warm up reps, warm up weight on a deadlift. Like this happens. And then even today, relevant to our conversation, turning strangers into friends, I will sometimes I'll be in, a variety of situations. I'll go up and start talking to somebody and it's like, dude, this is just, this person does not want to talk to you. Like, okay. Or I think I'm making a great, I, th I think I'm reading the room right. I think I'm having a great connection, a great time with somebody. And this happened just last week. Close the door on my way out of the party. And all I hear is just straight up mockery, mockery of me, everything about me. Well, I read the room wrong. Maybe I said the wrong thing. I Whatever. Who knows? Either way, I failed. It didn't go right. They were strangers, and they are definitely not friends. Like, what are you going to do? So whether it's along you know, the building of this skill or the building of any other skill, 
any pursuit, failure is going to happen no matter how dialed in you are, no matter how much mastery you have. What you do in the face of failure matters a lot. You can either let it set you off into a shame spiral or you can learn from it, dust yourself off, and just keep on moving. Having done both, I choose to do the latter now. I mean, the first time that I got back on stage after after the old Rona in something, again, that is totally my wheelhouse, that I've sung a lot, Beethoven 9 bass solo. I completely got off with the conductor and the ensemble during the last part of the of the crown. I was mortified, mortified. It completely ruined my perception of the experience and how I thought that I did, etc. And I know that thing cold and I crushed it in the rehearsals the day before and I am always ridiculously prepared in my music. And I'm pride myself on if nothing else, right, the ability to execute like with the voice but also my ability to be awesome and tight and totally dialed in and perfect rhythm and perfect sync and everything happening on stage. And I shame spiraled like crazy. And I wouldn't even give myself the grace of saying, well, dude, you've been off of the stage, off of performing for anything other than like, you know, Instagram karaoke for years. Don't forget that all your pride and everything else that you're basing this on was like you were performing in public multiple times a week for years. Didn't even give myself that grace. As opposed to now, it's just like, dude, just be like, well, you know what? Honestly, probably nobody even noticed. It sounded the same to everybody, no matter what. And you tried as best you could, and you were aware of it, and you took it on the chin. Just move on. Just forget about it. I heard a story once that in the NFL, one of the things that scouts and position coaches look for in a certain position in the defensive backs is like this goldfish memory. Like how well are they able to completely shake off screwing something up and get back to the next play as if it never happened. So I think we could all be a little bit more like a goldfish no matter what we are pursuing. Shake it off. Failure is going to happen. Excellence is fun. Always have a high standard for your output, but don't take it too seriously is not that serious it's just life nobody gets out of here alive anyway a couple of thoughts there on the secret art of turning strangers into friends all right any questions on that y'all let me know find me all platforms at michael hewitt 23 Go download the free PDF guide, The Three Pillars to Commanding a Room, if you want to tie this all together and have a bit more actionable, broader scope, actionable takeaways and a bit of a broader scope with which to help you turn strangers into friends. All right, y'all. Until next time, I'm Michael Hewitt. If you liked this show, rate it, review it. This has been another episode of The Sound of Leadership. Later, y'all.